Hello Booktube, uh, today I'm going to be giving you part 3 of my review of City by Clifford D.C. Mack. I'm reading City as a part of a read-along reorganised by um, Sean D. Sandfuss and in this part I'm going to discuss um, my views of the Tales 5 and 6 which are respectively Paradise and Hobbies. Now um, I should say this isn't going to be a, a too much of a... Uh, it's going to be a to be somewhat spoilery because these two stories are sort of directly linked to each other and that the consequences of what happened in Paradise have the knock-on effect to what goes on in hobbies. So in Parad Paradise is set um, about five years after uh, the fourth story we had Kent Fowler called Desertion who is a man on Jupiter sort of all dealing with the um, the colonize, the attempt to colonise um, Jupiter at that point is unsuccessful, then he gets converted into a um, into a loper, which is one of the uh, Jovian uh, creatures, uh, 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 species of creatures live on Jupiter, so Jovian uh, inhabitant. And um, in this story, we discover what's happened to him, which he and his uh, dog Tozer had uh, been converted into a loper, and they have been out there for five years, sort of sort of living out there and they feel sort of liberated from their bodies beforehand and they they can think and they can communicate and they can think differently and they can communicate without actually talking it's more like they think the thoughts they think what they're thinking because they're really, and then the other the other person immediately knows what they're saying and so Fowler has decided at the beginning of Paradise he's going to go back to the domes where the humans on Jupiter are living and they're going to he's going to tell them what, what he's discovered so that people can come to Jupiter and leave their bodies, human bodies, become lopers and live what he regards as a better life. Now, at the same time, um, he so he returns to Jupiter and then comes back to Earth. Uh, Earth at that point um, is obviously being ruled, but for, Earth has pretty much been governed by uh, the World Committee and in this, and in this uh, series, in in um, Paradise, the World Committee is controlled by another Webster. This one is, let me just find his name. Uh, sorry about this. Uh, Tyler Webster. And he is the he is a descendant of, obviously, the previous Websters. Uh, this story takes place, I think, about... I think a longer desertion take place about a thousand years. Uh, so, uh, several centuries, if not a thousand years after the... Uh, after um, uh, uh, census, um, and he is having to deal with the, what what might happen with um, Fowler when he gets when it becomes public because he is convinced that everybody's going to suddenly run to Jupiter and and be, uh, take up and do what Fowler did. And he's concerned about this because it would be, for, as far as he's concerned, it would be the end of the human race. And then at the same time, uh, Joe, the mutant from the census, has finally decided, centuries after stealing the Juan philosophy from Grant, the census taker, to return it to human beings. And Webster is convinced that Joe is doing this to get rid of human beings because he know, because Joe has solved the um solve the problem solve the uh, sort of issue that human beings it will not solve the issue he's completed the Juan philosophy which uh, which was uncompleted because of Juan's death and now he's returning it and it enables human beings to understand what they're saying completely each other completely it, it's described as being better than telepathy uh, tele telepathy uh, yeah you know what yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't do with that word, and um, and so Fowler thinks. Sorry, so, so Webster, th Tyler Webster thinks that these two combined will will lead to things that this would lead to sort of the end of the human race because they will have that combined with Fowler's discovery on Jupiter, and it will just lead to human beings vacating the galaxy and becoming globes. And he's horrified by this prospect, and so he sort of comes to the opinion, comes to the view that yes, something has to be done and that might be to murder Fowler. 
know, at this point in the at this point in history, there hasn't been a murder for a hundred for let's just have a look. It says a, I think it's a hundred and uh, yeah. sorry about this. I really should, again. I really should have thought this up. Um, Hundred and thirty odd years, something like that. Uh, yeah, something. Yeah, hundred and thirty odd years. Uh, but, uh, Tyler Webster thinks, well, I've got. To st I might. This might be the only solution to stop people. Sort of to stop the end of the human race as he views it. And so you get a decision between him and he got him thinking about this. Eventually, he doesn't do it, but he did the sort of. To, uh, Debate with himself over the morality of it, and that's sort of where that story ends. And then the next story, hobbies, it takes place, uh, I think, about a thousand years after that, where you're dealing with another Webster. This time, uh, again, this time it's uh, find him. John Webster, who is living in Geneva, and at this point, uh, most human beings are disappeared and gone off to Jupiter but about 5,000 of them are living but are still living on earth and they are living in the city of Geneva and because they've been left all the property and all the wealth of the world they're effectively living a post-scarcity post-work society where they can do anything they like and it's and so that the things they do are effectively as John Webster points out in the story merely hobbies um, at the same time, in on the Webster's old house in North America, uh, the dogs, which have been given um, a speech, have sort of, they've spread out over the over the centuries, and now they're very common. And there's a large number of them on the old on the old Webster estate, where they are keeping an eye on um, the mutants, and also they're listening for things called cobblies. Uh, in the story, you get you're told by Jenkins the robot that dogs can hear things that humans can't see but that do exist sort of that are living in sort of parallel uh, parallel universes or parallel planes of existence sort of and so they're they're, they're doing that they're also keeping an eye on um, world robots because uh, world robots are living in in, out on Earth and they're um, building machines because when people left Earth to get to Jupiter they left all the robots behind and so they, these robots are out in the world, out in sort of the wilderness uh, living on their own effectively um, and the, the, uh, the Webster estate is being run by, still being run as uh, we kept going for the dogs by <coughs> Jenkins. Um, Jenkins and the dogs both miss humans. Jenkins wants humans there because he, he exists as a servant and so he wants to be he wants somebody who can he can provide he can provide dinner for, he can bring a, a glass of whiskey for somebody so he can fulfil his sort of normal role, which he's missing. And the dogs have a, the, and the dogs have a sort of innate wish to be with humans. Even though they, many of them have never met a human, in fact, all, all the all the dogs who were alive at that point um, on the estate have never met a human before. And back in Geneva, uh, John Webster is writing the history of um, of Geneva, and he's found uh, he's which has been writing for that point of so, um, fifteen years. And he finds that, but he's sort of depressed by the fact that nobody's going to read it, nobody reads anything anymore because they don't need to. And also he's sort of worried by the fact that whilst there are still 5,000 people on Earth, in Geneva, a lot of them are going into what's, going what's called sleep, going to, going to something called sleep, which is, which, which is sort of suspended animation, where they can sort of lie in suspended animation for however long they want before they're woken up, whether that be centuries or thousands of years, and they can have a sort of a, a, a particular sort of dream created for them, and then they can then that put then 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 that inserted into their mind um, whilst they're in there whilst they're in the suspended animation. And uh, John's Webster's wife um, 
comes and visits him in the story and says she's going to go to sleep. And he sort of doesn't want her to, but eventually she does. And she sort of says, I've left a place for you, so if you want to come and Webster's sort of, John is uh, sort of resistant to it. You, you do get mention of their son, um, who is a, who is apparently living out in the world with a group of friends, with sort of doing a sort of um, hunter-gatherer um, existence, which he's really enjoying. And 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 so, so Webster is John Webster. Sorry, yeah, John Webster is sort of deeply sort of concerned about the way things are going. And he goes, and so he decides to go back to the Webster Estate in North America, and he visits. And he talks to Jenkins about the situation. Jenkins points out the dogs need somebody there, and he needs a human. Need, the dogs need humans, and he needs a humans. He needs a human to be there. And they discuss the mutants, and Joe is still around, the mutant who had the Juan philosophy. And eventually, John Webster thinks that humans shouldn't come back because the dogs are developing their own um, form of civilization, and that if humans came over and take, took over, it would merely just be a sort of ver a dog variation of human civilization, as opposed to be as opposed to being the sort of authentic dog civilization. And so then he, at the end of the story, he decides to go back to Geneva and takes up the place that his wife has got in um, for him to sleep. And so he goes to sleep. But before he does that, um, whilst he was doing his uh, writing history, he found in Geneva there was a defense system there. And so he decides before he goes to sleep, he's going to. Pull the, stop, pull the defence system, sort of trapping people in Geneva as a way of attempting to um, to wake them up from the the sort of lethargy and sort of lack of uh, the, the sort of lack of doing nothing that they have because of the leisure and the fact that. There's, they've got no need to work, therefore they've got no goal in life, and he wants to do this to give people a goal in life, and so he does that before he goes into uh, sleep, and that's at the end of the story. Um, I overall, I enjoyed both these stories. I would say I enjoyed um, I, the desertion makes a lot more sense after after having read um, uh, Paradise than before, and um, it's sort of. Uh, this story is very much obviously desertion and um, and hobbies are very much a direct sequel to desertion. But as uh, as has been put, as was pointed out on a live stream I did with Sean, do you stand fast, um, Greg and oh I forgot the name the chap's name now. Um, let me just find it. Um, we did. A lot, I'll leave the link to the live stream in the description so you can watch that as well. Uh, let me just get sorry about this. I should have remembered this. Now that I've mentioned the chap's name, I really can't. Um, Scott Danielson. But that's Scott. Uh, Scott Danielson, who is at the. Uh, yet he's got. Uh, yes, yeah, Scott Danielson. I think. Uh, let me just make sure I did get this right. Yeah, it is Scott. Sorry, sorry about that, Scott. I should really should have remembered your surname. Uh, <coughs> sometimes with names, I sort of forget, even though this I should, even though I should, shouldn't. But anyway, um, then it was discussed that uh, that, that in some ways it's very much a sequel to um, to Census. They're both sort of sequel, particularly um, Hobbies are very much a sequel to uh, Census. I think Scott was actually the one who mentioned that. Or it may have been Greg, but but anyway, that no no it was Scott, and it was very much mentioned there, and so I, I which I agree with it very much was. Um, again, I enjoy Simac writing. Um, I, I, I'm uh, the one strange thing that comes up. Um, I should say what I'm about to say doesn't doesn't affect my enjoyment of the story, but the idea of uh, they're not being a, a, they're not having been a, a um, a murder for a hundred odd years seems vaguely odd, vaguely ridiculous. But again, didn't uh, didn't sort of affect my enjoyment of the story. Um, you can in the, this in these two um, two stories really see sort of the dissolute the sort of disillusionment that sort of, that 
motivated Simak to write the story. You get the sense of that the sort of idea of technological progress doesn't automatically and an evolution uh, are not don't go hand in hand. That they are somewhat separate things and they can sort of contradict each other. With the, the idea of that one, the, with the idea of people sort of ceasing to be human because and going off to Jupiter because they can have a better sort of they can sort of become become liberated from um, sort of restraints they have as human beings and combined with the Duan philosophy sort of liberating them from sort of the blocks that sort of human beings have when it, humans have interacting with each other and understanding each other, which. That very much makes a lot. That's really just come through in those stories, and it really, really does. Um, do sort of on it. Does it, it was a nice surprise for me because I was getting this idea of reading the stories that that um, Simak was a sort of you uh, sort of disillusioned utopia utopian who thought that human beings, where where there's a particular sort of utopian idea that for human beings to advance, they have to cease to be human beings. And these two stories sort of made, sort of showed that wasn't Simak's um, idea. So overall, I really enjoyed this. Um, I should say this video should have come out last Friday, but I wasn't feeling too well last week, and so I did. I read obviously read the stories, but I didn't um, put a video up. So this is sort of that. This is that video that should have come up then, and you'll have another video uh, sort of doing the roundup of the final stories, which are stories. Seven, eight, and nine. Um, probably eight on, more than likely eight on Friday. So I will see you then. Bye, Doctor.